Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Today I wanted to share some makeup products that I have changed my mind about. I usually film these videos like once a year, but I think it's been a little bit longer than that because to be honest with you, I didn't have a ton of products that I changed my mind about. Usually once I try something out and I review it on my channel, my thoughts kind of stay the same, but every once in a while I try a product and I change my mind. So I have five products that I didn't like when I initially tried them. And then after a little while I fell in love with them. Maybe I switched up the check Maybe I tried them a different way, which would be the same thing. So I have those to share with you. And then I have five products that I initially really liked. You've heard me talk about them. You've seen me use them on my channel, but I've changed my mind and now I no longer enjoy them for one reason or another. So I thought I would share them with you guys in today's video. I hope you enjoy it. I'll link some of my previous videos like this in the description box below. Let's jump into it. Let's kick it off with the products that initially I didn't love or they weren't really working for me, but now I do really enjoy them. The first thing I wanna share with you guys is something that I have completely changed my mind about. I actually mentioned this in a favorites and fails video, maybe back in January or February, and I mentioned it as a fail. And I got so many comments from you guys saying like, this is one of your favorite products that I actually decided to hang on to it and try it again later. So I think I tried it again back in March, maybe April, and it's become a daily part of my routine. And I keep meaning to put it in like a monthly favorites video, and then I forget every time. So I wanted to share in today's video, I I love the Catrice True Skin Concealer. Honestly, this is such a good formula. I don't know why it didn't work for me initially. I think I said in my original video that it just didn't last on my skin. It looked super oily, it broke apart, which is so strange to me because the first time I used it was back in the winter when my skin wasn't extremely oily. Now we're heading into summer and my skin is a lot more oily, but this product works really well for me. It's definitely a hydrating, smoothing formula. It's so comfortable to wear, it blends out so easily, it looks smooth and even, and I just think it has like this really soft blurring quality to it. I don't think the formula is the same as the Catrice True Skin Foundation. That one definitely has more of like a satin, almost matte finish, whereas this one is a true hydrating formula that has more of a glowy finish but I love it. I think it has really good coverage for a hydrating concealer. It does crease if I don't set it right away, but once I set it into place, it does last on my skin, which again, I don't know why it didn't the first few times I tried it. I think it must have been some combination of like the primer, foundation, concealer that I was wearing and whatever reason, or for whatever reason, those combinations didn't work, but now it works really well for me. So thank you guys for telling me to give it another chance. I'm always open to giving products another chance because I want them to work for me and I'm glad this one does because it looks really nice on the skin. I actually have another concealer to share with you guys. I tried this years ago. I wanna say like five or six years ago at this point. And when I tried it back then, I did not like it at all, but I tried it again last year and I actually really enjoy it. So it is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Full Coverage Anti-Aging Waterproof Concealer. So it's really funny to me to think about this because back when I tried this, it was that time in makeup history when everyone was drawing just like super intense triangles of concealer under their eyes. It was a lot. I feel like it was the era of like Tarte Shape Tape when everyone would just use it to highlight their entire face. And I think when I tried this product, I'm sure when I tried it that I just applied way too much of it because I remember having in my mind that this product was a super heavy, super cakey, intense concealer. And it can be if you apply too much of it. It is definitely a full coverage concealer, probably the most full coverage concealer that I've ever tried. And it definitely has a little bit of stickiness, almost tackiness to it. I find that that is one of the reasons why I really enjoy it these days because it does last so well on the skin. But I'm sure back in the day when I was using this, I was just going in with way too much. So now when I use this product, I take the smallest amount, like one dot of this product, and I'll blend it out with a beauty sponge because I find that a damp sponge really helps to blend this product out because of the texture. So I do wear it under the eyes, but I do tend to use it more as a spot concealer. I think this is going to be more ideal for you under the eyes if you have really dark under eyes circles, which I don't, that's not my main concern. I have under eye wrinkles, I have a lot of texture, so I tend to go for something really smoothing, but I will say this is not as bad under the eyes as I remember it being years and years ago, but I really enjoy using it as a spot concealer. It is the most amazing spot concealer because this product stays in place all day long. It has super intense coverage, and like I said, a little bit goes such a long way, but I think the texture of this product is nice because 
It almost melts into the skin, but it still holds its pigment really well. Sometimes with full coverage concealers, as you blend them out, the coverage starts to disappear. That's not the case with this one. So I think if you're looking for a true long lasting concealer that has amazing coverage, this is definitely the one to try. I'm so surprised that I actually ended up loving it after trying it last year. I just thought I would try it out again because they did send it to me in the mail as PR. And it just goes to show opinions can change, especially when your technique changes. I think that's the key to getting a lot of products to work for me that I don't initially like. Maybe I'll switch up the brushes or the way that I'm applying them and that can make a big difference. So I do really enjoy this concealer as well. The next thing I want to share with you guys is a blush. And this is a good example of switching up my technique or I guess really switching up my tools with this product because when I first talked about this, a few of you guys suggested using a different brush and that made such a difference. So this is the Mel Cosmetics Digital Dust Duo Blush. And I have two now, but the original one that I purchased was Raw Honey. I remember talking about this in either like a review style video or a fails video. And I told you guys that I did not like this because it just lacked pigment. I couldn't get it to show up on the face, which again, is kind of interesting because at the time I was really into super sheer blush almost like a barely there wash of color. So that sounds like it would have been perfect for me, but it was so sheer that even for me, as someone who enjoyed like a barely there look, it wasn't enough. When I mentioned that in a video, some of you guys suggested using a really dense blush brush, which isn't something that I normally do because usually I like a more diffused look. So more of a fluffy brush typically works for me, but I was like, I'll try it out. It's an expensive blush. I wanted it to work for me. And a dense blush brush is the perfect way to apply this product. I use the Real Techniques blush brush that has like a pink handle. It almost looks like you could use it as a foundation brush because it's so dense. And that is perfect. This is a really interesting texture. It's not like your typical powder blush. It has like a soft, silky, smooth texture, almost like the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighters, but in blush form. I miss those highlighters. I have not had those in my collection in such a long time, but I really love this formula now. And what's funny is it looks really intense. Like you can definitely build it up to be really pigmented if that's something you want to do. So I encourage you, if you're having trouble with a product, maybe it's a bronzer, a blush, a highlighter, try switching up your tools. For some reason that didn't I didn't think of that because I'm not generally that picky about my brushes. I'll just use whatever's on hand, but switching up the type of brush or just like the shape of the brush can make a really big difference when it comes to how products apply. And that's definitely something I've learned more over the past year. I have a few lip products to share with you guys. So when I initially talked about these e.l.f. glossy lip stains, I don't think I gave them a bad review. I felt like I was kind of on the fence about them because they do have a lot of cons. They definitely have some pros, but I felt like overall it wasn't the type of lip product that I would be reaching for super regularly. But I feel like I've changed my mind about these because these definitely come in handy. First of all, I'm not the biggest lip stain fan. I definitely prefer like a regular lipstick or a lip gloss, and I'd rather just reapply my lip products throughout the day rather than having something that stays in place all day long. I know it's not the case for everyone. There are definitely people who want a long lasting lip product because they don't have time to reapply or they're doing a lot of talking and they just don't want something that's going to move around on them. I think that this is such a nice option if you want your lip product to stay in place, but you don't want like a dry, uncomfortable product. A lot of lip stains almost make my lips look super dry or they just kind of like suck all of the moisture out of my lips. And I've noticed that a lot of lip stains actually have alcohol as one of the main ingredients. So the reason why I like this is because it has a really gorgeous glossy finish. So as you apply it to the lips, it looks like you're wearing like a pigmented lip gloss. And then once that initial glossy layer wears off, you're left with a lip stain. I do think this formula is more hydrating than other lip stains because even once that initial glossy layer wears off, my lips do feel really hydrated throughout the day, which I definitely appreciate. But if I want that glossy layer back, I can just easily reapply it. And it's super easy. It doesn't feel like a high maintenance lip product. So I think I've come to appreciate them for what they are. If I want more of a long lasting lip color, then I'll reach for this because it's comfortable, it's glossy, there are pretty shades. And whereas it might not, what am I trying to say? 
Like this might not necessarily be my most ideal lip product formula, but on days when I do want the longevity, but I also want something comfortable, this is a really great option. That's what I'm trying to say. So even though this might not be my most worn lip product, I do feel like it has a place in my collection. And I do enjoy this. I like that brands are doing like these glossy hydrating lip stains rather than something that's dry and uncomfortable. So that's what I wanted to say. I just wanted to give you guys an update. I do enjoy them more than I initially did. The last product in this category is a lip gloss from NYX. It is the This Is Juice Gloss and I have the shade Pomegranate Cloud. So initially I did have a different color. I wish I still had it so I could try it out again and see if I enjoyed it more. The shade that I had was the purple one. I can't remember the name of it, but it basically looked like a clear gloss. It didn't have any color. And I didn't love that because I felt like I thought initially that it would have a hint of color, but also the formula wasn't my favorite. It didn't feel really glossy. It didn't last on my lips and I just wasn't impressed by it. Then I saw a couple of my favorites talking about this, Rudy Berry on TikTok. She also has Instagram and YouTube. I'll link her in the description box below. She has so many good recommendations. And then also Juicy Jazz, who is one of my absolute favorites. She has, again, so many good recommendations and she focuses a ton on drugstore and affordable makeup. So both of them were talking about this and it looked so good on both of them. So I went out and picked it up and I love it. I don't know that the formula is actually different than the original one, but I feel like it is. I feel like the one in the red tube is a little glossier. It's slightly more hydrating. You guys will have to let me know if you have multiple glosses from this line. Is the formula the same across the board? Because Sometimes that's not the case when it comes to an entire line of lip products or cheek products or whatever. Sometimes it is. So I don't know if my preferences have changed or this one is actually better than the purple one, but I really enjoy this one. It's one of my favorites, especially for summer. So let me talk about some products that I used to really enjoy. You might've seen them in favorites videos. You might've heard me rave about them. In fact, some of these have been favorites for a few years, but for one reason or another, I've changed my mind about them and I just no longer love them. So I just wanted to give you an update and share them with you in today's video. So let me start with a lip gloss formula. These are from About Face. I think About Face is such a cool brand. I really do enjoy a lot of their products. I think my favorite product from the brand would be their liquid shadows, especially the matte ones, because you don't see those from a lot of other brands and they look so smooth on the eyes. The quality is amazing. And something else that I like about About Face is that they recently slashed all of their prices. So their products are a lot less expensive just due to being more transparent. And I'm sure like part of it was a marketing move as well. But I do think that's really cool because you don't see that from a lot of brands who end up who initially start off charging more money for something and then end up bringing their prices down. Anyway, there is one product from them that initially I really liked and the more that I use it, the more that it's just not for me personally. And I think part of the reason why I liked these lip glosses so much is because the shades worked really well for me. These are the Light Lock lip glosses and I have a couple of them. I did a lip gloss declutter a few months ago and after doing that video, I've been wearing these a lot more just because now I can see what I have and enjoy my collection a little bit more they're not necessarily buried under other formulas. And since filming that video, I just realized there are a lot of other formulas that I like better than these. These are super lightweight lip glosses, almost like a lip oil formula, but they're not overly glossy on the lips. They have kind of like a subtle shine. For me, I just prefer like a really glossy lip product these days. And there are so many lip gloss formulas I love that whenever I wear these, I wish that I wore one of my favorite formulas. If you like a very lightweight lip gloss formula and something that's not overly glossy, something a little more subtle, then you might enjoy these. They're very smooth on the lips. But I think the other issue for me is that the formula just doesn't last. And typically I want my lip gloss to last a little bit longer than like 15 minutes. I feel like these wear off after 15 minutes. They also have a very strong mint scent and taste. I feel like I can taste them when they're on the lips, which I just don't love. So after wearing these quite a bit over the last few months, I just feel like I no longer enjoy them as much as I initially did. I love the shades. I think that's the reason why I was really loving them initially, but the actual formula is not my favorite. I just have one eyeshadow palette to talk about in today's video. I did include this in my eyeshadow palette declutter, and some of you guys were surprised to see me declutter this because I do love purple eyeshadow so much, but I just don't wear this very much. It's from Melt Cosmetics. It's the She's in Parties palette. When I initially got this palette, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the shimmers in it just because they're a little bit more 
subtle. They're not as intense as some of the shimmers in other matte palettes. They definitely have more of a satin finish rather than a true intense metallic finish, but I still got a lot of use out of the palette and I thought the color story was really beautiful. The mattes in here are nice and I still think that, but it is no longer like a staple purple palette in my collection. I feel like since trying this, I've discovered other palettes that I enjoy a little bit more. And when I am wearing more of like a purpley or berry toned look, I just want a really intense sparkly shimmer all over the lid. Kind of like what I have on today, I'm wearing the Huda Beauty Naughty Nude Palette, which I definitely prefer to this one. That is more of like a neutral slash berry toned palette rather than a true purple palette, but I don't know. I just, I'm not as drawn to this palette and Melt Cosmetics as a whole. If you want really intense pigment, then Melt is the way to go, or if you want a little bit more of a unique color story. But for me, I kind of like colorful shadows mixed with neutral shadows rather than really intensely pigmented colorful shadows. So I do feel like I've changed my mind about this, which is why I did end up decluttering it. I just haven't used it very much over the past year, year and a half. So I just felt like I could pass it along to someone else who might enjoy it a little bit more. But a lot of people were surprised because I do like purples. And there are just so many good purples these days that I feel like this one is no longer a favorite. So I am a fan of powder foundation. Probably for like the past two years, I've really enjoyed it a lot. And there are a couple of formulas in my collection that I've talked about. But ever since e.l.f. released their camo powder, foundation, I feel like I have no interest in using the other ones in my collection. That one is my absolute favorite. It's like creamy, but it has really good coverage. It looks amazing on the skin. It looks super skin-like, which a lot of powder foundations end up looking really matte or they lack coverage, or they don't stay in place well. The e.l.f. one is just like my perfect powder foundation. So after trying that one and really falling in love with that formula, I feel like I've changed my mind about this one from Fenty. This is the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I really haven't worn it very much since discovering the e.l.f. one because Every time I use a powder foundation, I just feel like it doesn't compare to that one. And now I feel like this one is just a little bit too dry on my skin. It definitely has more of a matte finish. And I think I will keep this one for touch-ups because it is more of a mattifying powder. So I feel like it will be perfect to throw into my bag when I'm on the go, especially during the summertime. But as far as like a true powder foundation goes, this really isn't my favorite formula anymore because it just feels a little bit dry. I feel like I want a little bit more coverage than I typically get out of this. And I just don't like how it looks on the skin compared to the e.l.f. one. So after trying the e.l.f. one, I feel like I've changed my mind about this, which is really interesting to me because sometimes when I try a product, I feel like it replaces an older favorite and it causes me to change my mind about that product. And I think that's okay, especially if it is a more affordable alternative because I'm all about saving money if at all possible. But I just find that I don't like this formula as much as I used to. It's summertime, so that could change because the e.l.f. powder foundation is, like I said, a little bit more creamy and I could see it not holding up as well on the skin as the Fenty one. So we'll see, but really for day-to-day -day wear, that is my go-to and I just don't enjoy this one as much. The Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 powder foundation used to be my favorite. I think I talked about this, I don't even know. Again, I think like five or six years ago on my channel. I loved it so much. I could not get enough of it. And then I think I ended up using it up. I hadn't repurchased it. So I bought it again kind of recently. I want to say back during like the 21 Days of Beauty. And I don't know if the formula has changed or my preferences have changed, but I just no longer like this product. I know this is a staple for so many people, including a lot of you. A lot of you guys told me this is your favorite powder. How do you use this? Because when I use it with a brush, I feel like it is so powdery. And as I swirl the brush in or I even tap the brush in, I lose so much product. It doesn't have a sponge with it. I feel like it probably would apply better with a sponge, but it just felt so powdery the few times I used it that I didn't even want to put it on my skin. So I wanted to ask you guys, is there a way that you love using this? Because I feel like my thoughts on this product have completely changed. I love the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 liquid foundation. I use that almost every day these days, but the powder just isn't doing it for me these days. I've tried buffing it into my skin as I would like another powder foundation. I've tried just going in with like a large fluffy brush and it just doesn't look good. I feel like it enhances my texture. It also doesn't really set my foundation if I'm using it as more of a setting powder, but I have mainly been trying it as a powder foundation because that's kind of how they market it. And I don't know, I just feel like it's very dry, very powdery. So I do feel like I've changed my mind about this, but before I completely give up on it, please let me know if you use it and the way that you like to apply it. 
the last product I wanted to share with you guys in today's video is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer. I purchased the Glowish Bronzer and the Glowish Blush at the same time, and right away I didn't like the blush. I felt like it was kind of dull on my skin, it lacked pigment, and it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be. But I did feel like I liked the bronzer the first few times I tried it. It looked natural on the skin, it was kind of like a lightweight, subtle bronzer, which is what I was going for at the time, and I definitely still like more of a subtle bronzer overall but since trying that one I've discovered a lot of other formulas that I like better and I ended up decluttering that one I think when I did my bronzer declutter and the few months leading up to that I just wasn't reaching for it very much because again when I used that one I felt like it kind of looked dull on my skin I'm pretty sure that those products are described as like naturally luminous or they give your skin like a subtle glow and I wasn't expecting like a shimmery glow or anything too intense but the powder just didn't sit well on my skin. I don't think it was so bad that it enhanced texture or it looked super patchy or muddy. It just looked kind of dull. It didn't look like anything special and Huda Beauty is a high-end brand so their products are a little bit more expensive and I definitely have bronzers that are like half the price that I prefer over that one. So initially I liked it because I appreciated the fact that it was so subtle, but over time I felt like I wanted something a little bit more out of my bronzer. So I definitely ended up changing my mind about that one which is why I decluttered it when I did my bronzer declutter. By the way, if you guys like declutter videos, I do have a lot of them on my channel. I'll link my playlist in the description box below. I just kind of wrapped up my declutter series for 2022. I feel like I have a few more categories that I could do. I just don't know if they're interesting enough to film a whole video about like lip liners, eyeliners, skincare products, that kind of thing. But if you wanna see those, let me know. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to know what are some products that you have changed your mind about? Whether you used to love them and now you no longer like them, or when you initially tried them, they didn't work for you, and then you ended up falling in love with them later, please let me know in the comments. I feel like that would be so interesting to read your responses. But I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I will see you guys very soon with a new one. Bye.